Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Sproul. I'm the president of the Maryland Center for Construction Education and Innovation. On behalf of everyone at MCCI, I'd like to welcome you to our first annual Pathway Awards. Thank you for joining us on the AirMeet platform, as you may have noticed. In this platform, there are virtual tables that you can join where you can directly chat with other attendees. This option won't be available while we're presenting. In fact, no one can see you or hear you unless you are called upon stage. So there's no need to worry about muting or worry about your camera. If you do win an award, however, we will ask you to come up on stage, so be ready. And we'd love to, to see you cheer them on in chat. You can use the reaction buttons, which are like clapping, laughing, celebrating, etc. cetera. Uh, they are in the bottom of the center of your screen. Please also use chat to ask questions or request more information. In fact, if you have any questions that you need help with, you can directly message Kimberly Haar. To DM her or anyone else, you go to the people tab at the top of your screen, hover over the person that you'd like to talk to, and then hit send message. Additionally, you'd, you should have received a digital program in your email yesterday. Um, or for those of you that signed up this morning, hopefully you got it in your, in your email box. But if not, we're gonna have a link to the program in the chat momentarily in case you missed it. In our agenda, you'll see that we are awarding our scholarships later this morning. We'd like to kick off fundraising for next year's scholarships right now. So in the chat, you'll see a link to, take a, to make a tax deductible donation to MCCI's scholarship fund. And that will be pinned at the top all day. And before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our amazing sponsors whom without we would not be able to do the work that we're doing. I'd especially like to thank our platinum sponsors, Not Mechanical, Whiting Turner, and Stanley Black and Decker, as well as our gold sponsor, Shapiro and Duncan. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our judging committee for their thoughtful and detailed review of all our awards and scholarship nominees. Now, many of you are fierce advocates for MCCI and the work that we do, but those, for those of you who might not be all that familiar with us, MCCI is a workforce intermediary with a mission to develop, promote, and connect career opportunities in the built environment. We're an independent and trusted advisor and resource for industry, education, and government with the mission of making careers in the built environment a first choice option. Since our inception in 2009, MCCI has focused on setting the foundation for change to the built environment workforce pipeline. There is no one single solution to our workforce problem, and we do have a workforce problem. At MCCI, we are trying to combat the issue on all sides. In the education sector, we're working on increasing enrollment, creating curriculum that aligns with workforce needs, and then easily articulates into post-secondary options. We're targeting women and minorities in our marketing and recruitment efforts because increasing numbers of these population will be a huge benefit to not just the industry, but also access to their careers in the built environment will be life-changing for those individuals themselves. And we're working with Maryland government to make the necessary changes in our state-run institutions and help direct funding to partner organizations that can do this necessary work. Speaking of government partners, I'd like to welcome to the stage the Maryland Secretary of the Department of General Services, Ellington Churchill. I've known Secretary Churchill since we were both working as business development professionals at competing construction management firms. Ellington Churchill has served as Director of the Department of General Services since 2016. He previously served as Deputy Secretary at the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development. Secretary Churchill began his professional career in 1999 as a project manager at Lewis Contractors. He was responsible for overseeing multi-million dollar projects, including the restoration of the Baltimore Basilica. In 2006, he took a position as senior project manager at Liberty Property Trust, which is the national developer of industrial and commercial office space. He returned to Lewis in 2010, and prior to joining the Hogan administration, he was director of business development. Secretary Churchill is a graduate of Virginia Polytech Institute of State University, where he received a Bachelor of Architecture and a Master of Science in Architecture. Secretary. I think you're muted. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Still with technology, and uh, in the last year, I still have made, made the uh, critical error of starting to speak before I am you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, and welcome to the Maryland Center for Construction, Education, and Innovation's Pathway Awards Ceremony. My name is Ellington Churchill, and I am the Secretary for the Maryland Department of General Services. First, I would like to thank Jennifer and the staff of the Maryland Center for Construction, Education, and Innovations for all the hard work they put into bringing this program to us today. Now, when Jennifer reached out to me to provide the welcome, without as any hesitation, I immediately accepted. Not because, as Jennifer mentioned, that we go back a number of days wearing different hats in friendly competition in the business development world, but because I believe in this industry. I'm a product of the industry, and I was able to get started taking a small job in a Maryland architectural firm in my teens. And from that, I filled a passion center of mine that would bring me to the position that I hold today. I had the opportunity to create, to be able to move an idea in my head and transform it into reality. And that's why I love the industry. There is a place for everyone in the architectural, engineering, and construction sector. And that's what I tell young folks who seek a different opportunity. And guess what? The industry needs them because our industry is so important to our country. It contributes to more economic growth and development throughout our great state and our country. And I would argue that the industry represents the foundation and building blocks of a great nation. Just think about it, the power of our industry, the power to provide investment opportunities, to provide job opportunities that help local businesses and small businesses. And in terms of contributing to human development, the promotion of the importance that contributes to every sector in the economy, which supports health, transportation, and our safety industries. And that's why I believe government needs to be a leader. Just think of the conversations that are going on today. The topic du jour, you probably heard it, well, it's about infrastructure. And the contracts with architectural, engineering, and construction sector that develop the infrastructure to support commerce related to health, transport, and education are so vitally important. And it's our industry. And I'm very fortunate to have a unique perspective on the industry through the eyes of general services. While the Department of General Services is best known as a proud steward of state facilities, overseeing the operation and maintenance of a vast portfolio of more than 6 million square feet of buildings and grounds throughout Maryland, we are also the agency who supervises and coordinates the design, engineering, and construction of a wide range of public projects totaling in the magnitude of hundreds of millions of dollars annually. And General Services hosts several events such as groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, and bean signings to help promote the construction industry and the projects that we are building across the state. From mine and dam reclamation in Western Maryland to building readiness centers uh, for our National Guard, new courthouses for our judiciary, and new public facilities for our public safety departments, and to building agricultural laboratories on our eastern shore. And yes, to reimagine the center for free speech in the state of Maryland, that being Lawyers Mall in Annapolis. And in every project behind the scenes is a diverse people from all different backgrounds, rich in talent and skills. And so, yes, I am so very proud uh, to be a part of it and to promote it and to promote the people and the companies that are integral and dedicated to our success. And you should be too. And that's why it's important to celebrate the success of an industry. We are here today to celebrate the amazing work being done in Maryland to promote career pathways in the built environment. And the Pathways Awards were created to recognize all the people, companies and partners in the architectural, engineering and construction industry who embodied the values of the Maryland Center for Construction, Education and Innovation and who have championed workforce development initiatives in the built environment in the past year. Within this program, you will hear this morning some amazing stories that bring to spotlight all of these outstanding finalists 
it's after all, it takes a village and their stories are compelling as they help to better our communities and fully demonstrate value in our industry. So behalf, on behalf of our governor, Larry Hogan, and our Lieutenant Governor, Boyd Rutherford, on behalf of the state of Maryland, I'd like to congratulate today's finalists and award winners on their incredible achievements. And I encourage all to help those who are looking for an opportunity to fill their passion centers for a career in the trades, design, management, and related professions to keep up the good work and continue to promote, develop, and connect career opportunities in the built environment. So thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary. It was great seeing you again. Now we'll welcome to the stage our keynote speaker for the day, Kayleen McCabe. Kayleen's passion for the trades was put to the test on Rescue Renovation, the DIY, DIY network series she hosted for five seasons. Today, this contractor, sought after speaker, and the 2009 winner of DIY's Stud Finder competition funnels her know-how and innovative spirit towards a more pressing need than outdated tile, vocational advocacy and awareness. Her nonprofit, the McCabe Foundation, tightens America's skills gap by encouraging young men and women alike to consider careers in the nation's most undervalued, unfilled sector, the trades. A familiar face at industry events and in schools across the nation, Kayleen works exclusively with organizations including Skills USA and the National Association of the Remodeling Industry. When she's not knocking down stereotypes or walls, Kayleen caters to a wide array of clients on custom projects ranging from pergolas and decks to furniture and custom storage. Welcome, Kayleen. Thank you very much, Jennifer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm thrilled to be here. It's such a pleasure. And I am so excited that we are celebrating the best industry ever. Obviously, I am biased. I come out of the construction industry, but I'm pleased to be here today because I wanted to share a little bit of my story and then also why I find such value in the construction industry. Um, I grew up with the trades. My dad was a welder and my mom was the, a nurse. Uh, however, I was still in school at the time when it was encouraged that college was the only pathway to success. And without holding that degree, I would never become a business owner or a leader in my community. Um, and really, when I graduated high school, I wanted to become Indiana Jones. And that's not really something that they have a degree for. Um, and so I'm not a very good uh, sitter. I'm not good behind a desk or at a computer. I love working with my hands and being creative. And I had the opportunity to work on construction sites where I realized that my happiness really did come from uh, producing with my hands and at the end of the day being able to walk away and say, I built this and I understand why I'm tired, but I also feel satiated in this opportunity. Now, um, I do have to say and clarify, when I won DIY Network's Stud Finder competition, that was not a dating competition, thank goodness. Um, it was actually a show to look for the next host. And I was very excited for the opportunity because um, I wanted the chance to be on the network uh, on a national platform to show the audience on how amazing this industry is. But a little bit of clarification, in the television world, we have only 22 minutes to tell a story that sometimes takes eight weeks to happen. And a lot of things were being left out. Like um, on my television show, I had the opportunity to help homeowners fix their projects that they had started. I wonder how many projects started during quarantine. Hmm, um, I bet there's a lot of interesting things happening. So I would go in and fix the project, but on the show, it looks like I just met the folks for the first time, but in reality, we had known each other for months and there had been a lot of planning. Now, what's sad about television is I didn't get the chance to share with my audience all of the other amazing careers that are associated with this, the architects, the engineers, um, even, you know, the we pull permits and we do it by the book. But on the show, it looks like me and two guys make magic like this happen in seven days. And that is just not the case. And when season five came around for my show, I realized that I really wanted to do more than just get more pantry space for folks, which is awesome and a lot of fun. But uh, I had been in the television industry for a little over 15 years at this point and needed to really um, 
do something a little bit more. And I started to think about what were the challenges I was facing, not only being uh, in television and in construction, which are two industries that shouldn't normally blend together, but and also being a general contractor in the construction industry. And even with a television show and great opportunities and fun pay, I was still having a hard time finding qualified contractors, people who were passionate about this industry, folks like me who wake up every day and I'm excited to get to do math all day long, but I'm translating it through tile or two by fours. And this is so much fun and I couldn't find plumbers. And I started to think about what were we sharing with students and the public regarding the value of working in this career? I am working in someone's most expensive investment more often than not. And I consider myself to be a surgeon. I've seen television shows where ER doctors use Milwaukee Sawzalls and it's the same Sawzall that I use on my track. Milwaukee does not have a medical line. And so where is that disconnect? And I think, you know, we didn't do a, a good enough job yet and we are doing a great one, especially with awards like this in celebrating with students what great career opportunities these are. And then also sharing with parents the fact that enrolling your student in a CTE program, career and technical education, it's not um, dirty, gross work. It's actually something that is incredibly rewarding. Um, they make fingernail clippers so you can clean your nails at the end of the day. But I do on average more uh, math calculations in my head than an accountant will during a day. Um, and also I'm outside networking and communicating with a great team. And so participating in these classes, you as a student or your parent, your child is learning communication and teamwork, um, skills that employers right now find highly valuable and we're seeking after in general. But then also um, should, Every student take um, a construction class. Yes, yes, you should because, oh my gosh, there are so many different career opportunities outside of that. In just residential construction alone, it takes 27 different trades to build a house. Imagine now when you start to look at commercial and industrial construction, the career opportunities are endless. But if you take that class in high school, you might find a career you love and are passionate about or you're going to become a better consumer. And so one day when you wanna put a big screen TV on your wall, you're going to know how to do it because you know where the studs are at. Or if you don't have the time, you understand why you're paying that contractor $80 an hour to come in and get it done for you. So um, should I think everybody take an automotive class? Absolutely, because at some point we all drive cars. And uh, if nothing else, knowing how to do simple maintenance is very important, but then also being a better consumer. And there's nothing more valuable than feeling empowered when talking to someone else in the trades and being able to communicate what you need, uh, especially as a female, sometimes walking into a mechanic can be challenging and you want to feel empowered and knowledgeable. And so taking that class in high school could lead to a career. The technology in cars now, we call, they're not mechanics, they're technicians because we're employing so much technology into, oh, auto mechanics, but then back to the world of construction, it's amazing. We 3D printed houses, sure that's going to be a thing, but where I'm excited is I play video games. I'm sure a lot of our students do too. And I love the 3D games, it's a lot of fun. When I build homes for people, I used to take blueprints. And blueprints, for folks who don't know, um, you know, it's a flat sheet of paper. It's hard to sometimes translate all those squares into 3D. And so what I do now is I work with young students who can take those blueprints, turn them into 3D programs, and then I have homeowners with virtual reality goggles walk around their new house. This is changing the game all over the place. And so the industry as a whole, the built industry is safe. It is welcoming. It's enthusiastic and very energetic about having everybody come in. Basically, are you breathing? Come join us because there is a place for you everywhere. I love being on a job site. It makes me incredibly happy, but that might not be forever. And I do own companies, so I can sit in an office, but, um, you know, just like uh, I'm not, I'm better with power tools than I am with technology as well. I'm excited that I came on unmuted. Ooh, hey. um, so it's, it is a lot of opportunities and growth potential. I'm excited that we're celebrating 
um, everyone today as well, because it does take um, a whole community now. We've been saying for over 30 years that the only pathway to success was just this one way. And now we know that's not true. For every 10 jobs, seven of them do not require college or university, but they do require trade schools or apprenticeships or internships, things that will continue to further education. And that's where it's fantastic to have industry on board helping out with this process and helping also um, parents, guidance counselors or school counselors, um, and also other gatekeepers understand that students have a very clear pathway after graduation, and it could be with your company or with your business. And so highlighting these opportunities is fantastic, but then also encouraging young students, who doesn't love an award? So I hope that uh, a lot of young students are very enthusiastic and want to also take advantage of this. You know, the other statistic that I find interesting is if young students now are just going to college to get a bachelor's degree and they don't know what, but they're using those four years to kind of figure out what they're going to be doing next, on average, that bachelor's degree, they won't pay that debt off until they're 45. Um, that's basically like saying to an 18 year old, hi, sign on this dotted line for a house that you will never see or walk in. Um, and while I am not knocking college or university, I work at amazing architects and engineers. And I truly believe my best architects are the ones who during the summertime worked on a framing crew and learned how gravity works in real life. Because you'd be surprised, some of these computer programs will let you do some pretty crazy things. But it's important. And so if you want to go to um, university or college, it is for you. Heck yes. But we no longer need to encourage 100% of people to be doing that. Um, when we also look at the rest of the industry being very excited and enthusiastic about females um, and welding. Um, and it's not to not look, guys, I, I work with a bunch of guys. They're awesome and they're fantastic. I'm very excited to work with more ladies on the job site, too. Um, welding and also trim work, um, very detailed things. They're finding, I, I pick out welding in particular um, because our attention to detail is up close normally. I'm blind, so if I try to put on eyeliner, uh, the mirror is very close. Welding is the, almost the same thing, but you also need a good beat and a good rhythm. And it's, so it's, it is very artistic. And the reality is, is all the trades at its base is art. Um, we are creating art you eat, art you live in, art you drive on, bridges we drive over, buildings we look at. It is all an expression of art and also math, which is a language and we should start teaching that, but that's a tangent for another day. Um, and it's, it is, um, it's a wonderful experience that I am excited that MCCI is, um, MCC, MCCEI, sorry. <laughs> My alphabet soup is slow this morning. Um, is really coming together and celebrating the community as a whole. Um, I'm also very excited about the scholarships because this is an amazing opportunity. There is no reason that uh, students need to go into massive debt to get the education they need in this career path, especially when employers are very enthusiastic about having folks on and to train them. Um, but the scholarship does always help out with furthering education. There is classroom, there are books, there are uh, tools that need to be purchased, uh, safety equipment. And so um, considering donating to the scholarship is awesome. And I'm so happy you have that opportunity. Jennifer, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I obviously want to talk on forever and ever, but sometimes when I'm shortened too much, I'm like, oh, I don't know which stories to share next. Um, and so I, I do want to leave you with this for everybody um, who is uh, tuning in. I also want to challenge you to spread the word. So if you win an award, uh, high five uh, or high elbow, whatever is now PC, um, tell strangers on the street about the award. Tell your friends and family and have them pass it on. And for the other attendees next year, bring five people with you so they can check out this fantastic event. And so... Uh, Jennifer, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and cheer everyone on. I am very excited. And for all of the young uh, contractors in the room, I can't wait to work with you in the future. Come to Colorado. We're hiring too. I'm sorry. You're not allowed to steal our Maryland talent. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, thank no, you very no. much. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Kayleen is very inspiring. And kudos to all the people uh, in construction, especially NAWIC members, right? So, okay. Thank you very much.
And now we're going to get onto our awards. Our, award, our first award of the day is our governor, the Government Partner of the Year Award. This award is given to a person in the public sector who embodies the values of MCCI and who has championed workforce development initiatives in the built environment in the state of Maryland. The first finalist for Government Partner of the Year is Mike DiGiacomo, Executive Director for the Governor's Workforce Development Board, also known as GWDB. Since appointed as Executive Director of GWDB in 2015, Mike has led Maryland towards workforce development friendly policies and been a strong ally of the construction industry. Mike serves as an ambassador for Maryland's business community and further advises the governor and the workforce system on the workforce development and training needs in Maryland. Mike's work has impacted literally thousands of people across the state of Maryland. An essential function of GWD, GWDB is the promotion of a workforce that reflects the diversity of the state of Maryland. Under Mike's leadership, GWDB has sponsored numer numerous initiatives that help marginalized groups, such as immigrants, minorities, ex-offenders, veterans, and individuals with a disability get access to careers in the construction industry. These initiatives include the Immigrant Task Force, Interagency Transition for Youth with Disabilities, the Second Chance Task Force, Work with the Woodland Jobs Corps Center, and work with Vehicles for Change to name just a few. This passion for diversity aligns directly with MCCI's value of inclusion. Moss Redley, as a superintendent of National Park Services Historic Preservation Training Center, Ross Redley creates training opportunities for craftspeople and promotes the historic trades with the National Park Service. Moss has initiated and now oversees a traditional trades apprenticeship program. This program has national reach, but is based in Maryland. Its goal is to teach young people traditional trades and get them job ready for the public and private sector careers, while also developing their awareness and appreciation for the historic built environment. The traditional trades apprenticeship program will integrate as, as a pre-apprenticeship program to the previously mentioned historic trades apprentices. Our history lives in the sweeping landscapes and beautiful structures protected within the more than 400 national parks, monuments, and historic sites across the country. Over the years, though, these historic structures have begun to show their age. And as woodworkers, architects, metalsmiths, and other trades masters retire, we need skilled craftspeople to take their place. The traditional trades apprenticeship program of the National Park Service is preparing the next generation to take on the challenge of preserving historic structures. Young adults and military veterans work side by side with craft experts to learn skills such as masonry, carpentry, and building maintenance, as well as the foundations of historic preservation in amazing places across the country. They repair monuments, refurbish historic cabins, rebuild masonry walls, and more. In doing so, they preserve the very stories that define us as a nation. To learn more or to join a crew, visit our website. Okay. And now we're going to invite Kayleen back up the stage to announce who our winner is. Jennifer, this is so exciting. Oh, thank you so much for letting me come back on. Um, uh, all right, so the winner is um, Mike DiGiacomo. Congratulations, yay! Woohoo! I'm gonna do the re reactions too. Uh, thanks, Keeling. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer, congratulations, Mike. Thank you, oh. Thank you so much, Kayleen. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, 
On behalf of the Governor's Workforce Development Board, we'd like to recognize the great work of MCCI for working with all of the young men, women, and parents to get them educated on the really exceptional opportunities available in the construction industry and really look forward to our continued collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Mike, and congratulations again. Okay, so in between our awards, we'll, be, we'll spend a few minutes highlighting the work we're doing here at MCCI. And one of our most outward facing initiatives is our Build Your Path brand. This career guidebook was born from conversations with high school guidance counselors who said they didn't have any resources to share with their students who are interested in careers in the built environment. We just launched the fourth volume this spring with a fresh new look. Due to the ever-changing world of virtual learning, we published the guidebook digitally first, and we'll be printing and distributing it to all the high schools in Maryland, Delaware, DC, and Northern Virginia in time for the new school year. So if you missed your chance to get an ad in, never fear, there's still time. You'll see a link in the chat on how you can get to get an ad. The brand has also been expanded to include podcasts and videos as well. Our podcasts feature people in, in, in our industries and, story, and their stories. In fact, several of you in attendance have been guests, and we'd love to feature each and every one of you. There's a link in chat that will show you where our podcasts, uh, podcasts live. Our video series will eventually feature every single career in the built environment. We've released four videos so far, and our fifth video with a new video production firm, a new host, and a brand new look will premiere on the 17th. We've got a treat for you today, although a sneak peek. Check out this teaser about apprenticeships. Hey everyone, I'm Angelica, here with Build Your Path, and the topic of today's video, drum roll please, apprenticeships. An apprenticeship is a training program for specialized and technical jobs that require tons of brain power along with hands-on work. Some of the different trades that are apprenticeship based may include electricians, plumbers, HVAC technicians, or carpenters. However, there are a number of built environment careers that require an apprenticeship. I want to thank our sponsors, Shapiro and Duncan and Carter Machinery for your help in this video, as well as all of our platinum level sponsors as well. Our next award is for the Community Partner of the Year. This award recognizes a nonprofit or community partner organization for an initiative, program, or other support they have implemented that align with the mission of MCCI. Our first finalist, the Baltimore Joint Apprenticeship and Training Committee, or JATC 24, has been a registered apprenticeship sponsor in Maryland since 1961. The organization provides training for men and women in, the, in a career pathway in the construction industry. Their members support local communities with their community outreach program through re their Renew initiative and through active partnerships with local schools. And a new partnership with Baltimore County Public Schools in 2020, the JATC sponsors the opportunity for high school students to earn their first year of apprenticeship training for free. In its inaugural year, this innovative partnership provided 13 high school seniors with online curriculum and support to their er interim credentials prior to graduation. Only one student participating in the interim credentials had any prior construction experience in a CTE program. Having the opportunities for students who had no prior access to construction courses to achieve construction credentials this senior year through this program has been a critical component to providing BCPS students with a pathway to success after graduation. In fact, there is already a waiting list for next year's cohort. NAWIC Baltimore hosts two annual events to promote a career in the construction industry to students. The first, Camp NAWIC, was started in 2016 as a free day camp to girls in 7th to 12th grades with a goal in introducing them to a career in the construction industry. This week-long program includes multiple interactive events such as construction site visits, hands-on skills, and presentations about post-secondary opportunities. Programming has also included sessions on architecture, construction management, virtual design and construction, leadership, and job site safety. The second annual event, Block Kids, is designed to introduce children to a career in the construction industry. For over 25 years, Newick Baltimore has held this one-day event at the Kennedy Krieger Institute. Volunteers meet students with hard hats, 
bags of Legos, and miscellaneous supplies and encourage them to build a structure of their choice. Students are also treated to a gymnasium full of hands-on construction activities, including plumbing, electrical work, carpentry, and painting. NAWIC members have also hosted a lunch and learn for female students at Kenwood High School in Baltimore County. The program was to encourage girls to sign up for the school's carpentry and plumbing programs. Women construction professionals spoke about their education and job responsibilities, in addition to the challenges and rewards of working in the built environment. Prior to the event, there were only six females in the two programs, and because of their outreach, an additional five enrolled. Prioritizing an underrepresented sector of the industry, women aligns NAWIC Baltimore with MCCI's value of inclusion. Our final finalist for this category is Project Jumpstart. They have a 14-week construction training program for Baltimore City residents. The program is a partnership between the Associated Builders and Contractors of Baltimore and the Job Opportunities Task Force. Experienced teachers help students understand job readiness and prepare for success on the construction site. Students also receive essential safety training, financial coaching, a stipend, and driver's education. Project Jumpstart also serves contractors by referring only well-screened, job-ready candidates to meet their entry-level hiring needs. They are changing perceptions by, by proving through continued success that returning citizens and other at-risk members of the community can, can succeed when given a second or sometimes even a third opportunity in life. Currently, Project Jumpstart holds six classes a year in two locations, serving approximately 125 Baltimore City residents every year. Over 800 graduates have been through the program in the last 14 years with the help of over 150 participating companies with an 80% job placement. Well, before I was on Jumpstart, I quit a job that I've been there for a long time that I didn't want. Before Jumpstart, I was right out of high school and I was working at Burger King. Before Jumpstart, it was McDonald's. Man, I'm doing everything that I wanted to. I'm learning everything. I'm learning things that I never knew before. When it was over, I thought it was over. Then I got the phone call. Hey, Sean, I think you're a great candidate. Gonna get you a nice job. Next thing I know, I was working for miles. It's five years later. I finished school, running work. Life great for me. I brought my own home. Yeah. If I knew about the things that I knew back then, and this probably, this probably wouldn't be a different total conversation for me right now. Mr. Miles Electric, being an electrician is obviously a career, and being an electrician is what I really wanted to do. Now this jumpstart then paved the way that when you walk into an interview, you tell them you've been through the program, they know that you're willing to learn. The jumpstart then gave you the start to have the training to say, hey, I'll give the effort to just try. I felt like I was like down so low and then everything that I wanted in life just kept going up, 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 up. But I'm glad that I did, you know, pull the jump start because everything that I'm learning and everything that I've learned, I mean, started from there. Project Jumpstart exemplifies inclusion as their enrollment demographics include 96% African-American males, 75% unemployed, 75% have some level of criminal background, approximately 20% have never had a driver's license, and approximately 80% rely on public transportation or other means to get to class. And now let's hear from Genevieve Gorder as she announced who, announces who are winners. Hey guys, I'm Genevieve Gorder, interior designer and television personality, here to announce the Community Partner of the Year. And the winner is Project Jumpstart. Congratulations. Congratulations, Project Jumpstart.
I'd like to invite Jimmy Stewart of Project Jumpstart onto stage to accept their award. Good morning, uh, Jennifer, thank you so much. We're obviously very excited uh, to receive this award. It's been a, uh, a pleasure working with uh, the, the community, um, your group as well, to deliver um, the services that we do for Project Jumpstart. You know, I think we're just getting started. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, continuing down this path, uh, improving the program even further and helping more people. So thank you so much for this award. We greatly appreciate it. And thank you, Jimmy. Congrats again, Project Jumpstart. Our next award is for the Future Builder of the Year. This award recognizes a student, apprentice, or trainee who exemplifies the best of the built environment. Our first finalist, Everett Jackson, is a student at Morgan State University, where he recently completed his Bachelor of Science in Construction Management with a 4.0 grade point average. Everett is now continuing his education to pursue a Master of Science in Construction Management. Everett models the MCCI mission to promote, develop, and connect career opportunities in the built environment through his education, volunteerism, and internship. Everett is an ACE Baltimore mentor where he helps guide high school students through the 15-week program. In addition, Everett promotes the industry through Morgan State's career fair focused on the built environment, and is an actively involved in Morgan State's chapter of the Construction Management Association of America. He also holds various industry certifications for topics such as green building, construction software, and safety. Everett shows his promise and passion through his hunger to learn while also giving back and helping others. He has interned for a general contractor for three years and has even worked part-time during the school year as his schedule allows. He's a team player doing meaningful work. As an intern, he has served in the important roles of project engineer and assistant superintendent on his project assignments. Everett is aiming to be a superintendent and he is well on his way. Since enrolling in HVAC in high school, Haley Brennan has challenged the status quo and is a role model for females in the construction field. Now in a male dominated program, pro program studying mechanical engineering at the University of Maryland College Park with a focus on HVAC and mechanical contracting, Haley continues to support, promote, and connect students with career opportunities in the built environment. Encouraged by her mentors since high school, Haley has taken leadership roles in the construction field through participating in Skills USA as both a local and state officer, and is now president of two built environment student organizations at College Park, the Construction Management Association and the Mechanical Contracting Association. Haley has assisted in managing operations in a medium-sized mechanical contracting firm, worked with, a, worked with an MEP project manager for a very large general contractor, and has served, with a project, served as a project engineer for a large mechanical contracting company. This summer, she will explore a different path as a building insights engineer intern with another large mechanical contracting company. Haley encourages others to pursue a career in the built environment with her outreach and through the teamwork competitions in mechanical construction, having placed in the top 10 in the nation with her UMD team for the Mechanical Contractors Association of America student competition in the past two years. Haley is truly a champion of her own and for future builders. Kelvin is a recent graduate of Owings Mills High School located in Baltimore County, completing the Project Lead the Way pre-engineering program. In the coming school year, Kelvin will be attending the Community College of Baltimore County, pursuing a degree in civil engineering. Kelvin's interest in the industry started early when in sixth grade, he started to learn about architectural drawings at his previous school in Ghana. Kelvin was nominated for this award due to his leadership in the ACE Mentor Program of Baltimore, where he served as his team student leader. In addition, Kelvin volunteers with the Owingsville High School Support Network, where they organize and distribute food and clothes in the community and is a member of the CASA program. Kelvin was appointed student leader at the, at the ACE Mentor Owings Mills High School team because of his natural ability to lead. 
Calvin kept the other students working, pulled together the entire end of the year presentation, did the, did the construction estimate all by himself, and created the profile of the client. His nomination noted that he would be an outstanding construction manager one day. Calvin plans to return to the ACE Mentor Program by mentoring for a team as he gets into his career. He states that through this, he can guide other high school students who have an interest in the built environment. And now I would like to turn this over to Brian Billick, who will announce the winner of the Future Builder of the Year. I'm Brian Billick, Super Bowl winning head coach for the Baltimore Ravens. I want to congratulate all the winners tonight and everybody as part of the association. I have the honor of announcing the Future Builder of the Year, and the winner is Haley Brennan. Congratulations, Haley, and good luck. Thanks, Brian. Congrats, Haley, and please join us on stage to say a few words. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, wait till my camera comes on. Uh, thank you so much um, to MCCEI and especially uh, the Mechan Mechanical Contractors Association of Metro Washington for all their support um, since starting college and everyone who's helped me get this far. Looking forward to inspiring the next generation of the built workforce. Thank you. Congrats again, Haley. Our next award is for the MCCI Educator of the Year. This award recognizes a teacher, guidance counselor, professor, administrator, or instructor who goes above and beyond to inspire the future workforce in the state of Maryland. Our first finalist, Amy Rock, is an instructional specialist with Prince George's County Public Schools and was nominated not just once, but twice by colleagues for this award. One described Amy as a staunch advocate for equal access and diversity in the construction trades and is a known advocate and partner with the construction unions and employers. Amy has led many initiatives that focus, that showcase her dedication to the built environment and the MCCI mission while impacting well over 2,000 students. Amy was the leading force behind the Prince George's County Public Schools Student Built House Project, where she arranged for employers to visit the project, which led to job offers for many of the students. Amy then created a construction trades hiring event for graduating seniors in the construction trades who did not find employment through the first round. Amy also led, organized, and facilitated a student Parent Night to promote the Multi-Craft Core Curriculum, or MC3, to prepare students to enter union-supported jobs from schools without a CTE construction program. When she promoted the MC3 curriculum, she wanted to ensure that the speakers reflected the student population and were able to connect with the students on a personal level, and therefore she invited women and people of color who are master tradespeople to present. Finally, but surely not the end of the list of things she has led and accomplished, Amy has launched and leads Prince George's County Public Schools Apprenticeship Maryland program, which allows students to obtain related construction and paid on the job training while still in high school. She then helps them continue their full-time employment apprenticeship path after they graduate, including helping them gain licensure into their respective trades. Recently, Amy has created a new partnership with the Mechanical Contractors Association of Metro Washington, where students completed on-the-job training with MCA Metro Washington employers. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity. I can secure my future and contribute to the company. These kids coming from school and they're stepping up. to me. I mean, I came from there. I came from high school straight into one of these programs. We've uh, positioned ourselves to become the bridge between the employing contractors and the schools. And what that essentially is, is community. And if we can build, grow, foster, nurture this community, we're doing our part. It's like I was just in class learning about HVAC and then I'm actually in the workforce doing everything that I was taught in high school.
It's a career. I mean, you come out of this, you get paid to go to school, and you come out of it with no debt, making $100,000 a year with a benefits package. They want me to become successful. They're teaching me different things. They're helping me grow to be a better steam fitter or welder. When I get a new employee, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do, I'm here to make you feel comfortable as a part of the W.L. Gary team. The transition from high school to the real world is at a faster pace. You have to be reliable, not only for yourself, but for others. Suitland High School prepared me for this opportunity. A lot of hands-on work, a lot of book work. Having a secure job, it feels very good because at a young age to save money and prepare for a real world. I have a goal to first complete this apprenticeship and then work on getting my journeyman license. I can see myself in this industry for probably the rest of my life. Jim Palamaki is committed to the success of students in Prince George's County Public Schools through his role of site manager and industry trades teacher at the annual Constructed Student Build House. Through this project, Jim facilitates the development of young minds through real world experiences. He promotes the construction industry as a pathway to success, and he leads young people in building their skill set and he connects them to jobs that lead to careers in high-skill, high-wage, and high-demand industries. Jim works with the students in the following programs of study and courses, masonry, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, carpentry, information technology, interior design, and construction design management. Jim has worked with approximately 300 students a year since 2007, impacting nearly 4,000 students. His students have entered industries such as real estate, information technology, engineering, architecture, masonry, their superintendents, foremen, and more. Jim's work has not only built students' technical skills, but also employability skills such as initiative, leadership, communication, and teamwork. To many of his students, Jim is a mentor. They ask him questions about his career journey, and Jim is happy to share. Jim sees real-world experiences as a key component key component to career success. In turn, Jim can reach out to his network of industry professionals who count on him to lead them to qualified and skilled workforce. A lot of opportunity. They can get their certification for whatever trade they're in. They can start working directly right out of high school. The contractors that work with us out here They've hired some of our kids. We have a student that graduated last year from the electrical program at Crossland. He's making $30 an hour. It's just totally different being on site than it is what you teach in the classroom. Brings up the memory when I first experienced how to build a house. It was challenging, but at the same time, I learned a lot from the inside and the outside how to make stuff. Plumbers, carpenters, electricians, give the kids the opportunity to do what's done in the actual real world. They progress so fast while they're out here. We'll probably get a job in the real world and it will make my life a lot easier. Our third finalist, Peter Claudmans, is a career and technical education teacher at Eastern Technical High School in Baltimore County. Peter started in, in the industry working in commercial will, mill work before transitioning to his teaching career. In the 30 years of being a teacher, Peter has taught various built environment courses centered around design and engineering. Peter understands the importance of teaching career preparation and therefore has written and implemented curriculum as well as holds multiple roles across a wide array of extracurricular activities to help students receive out of the classroom experience. Some of these extracurricular activities include preparing students since 1994 for the annual competition sponsored by ASHRAE, acting as the ACE Mentor Program of Baltimore School Champions since 2009, and coaching the boys' varsity soccer team since 1992. Peter's passion is not only for the built environment, but also for the value of inclusion. Through Peter's years 
four years of PhD coursework in instructional leadership for changing populations, he reaffirmed that teachers need to implement this into their classrooms. For this reason, Peter has two rules. Eliminate criteria such as attendance or commitment. Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Too much talking. <laughs> Eliminate criteria such as attendance or commitment and instead encourage students to try things they're interested in. And remove barriers related to transportation and money. These rules reinforce the overarching philosophy that all students, regardless of race, gender, or socioeconomic status, are welcome to participate in all activities. And now I would like to turn this over to Eddie Murray, who will announce the winner of the MCCI Educator of Hello, everybody. Hey, this is Eddie Murray. 2003 inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame. I'm here tonight to help you guys announce the winner of the Educator of the Year Award. And the winner this year is no other than Amy Rock. And I hope that everybody stands up and give Amy a big round of applause. This is from Steady Eddie. Hey, happy, happy awards winning to you, Amy. Thank you. Happy, happy. All right, Amy, congratulations. Please join us on stage to say a few words. Hi, I don't know if I'm visible at this point. Um, thank you, thank you so much for this, first of all, but I do have to say that this is an award um, that I'm accepting not solely on my behalf, but on behalf of everyone in Prince George's County Public Schools and in our county who work so hard for our construction trades programs, including Jim Palamaki, our, our co-finalist here today, who runs our Student Build House Project. Um, special shout out to Hannah Inman from the Mechanical Contractors Association, who has gone above and beyond this year and done everything she can to say yes to every ask we had for our students in our classrooms. And to all of you out there who are contractors, we still have some seniors who have not yet been placed. Um, so we still have some kids, if you are hiring, that we would love to place with you. Um, just want to say again, thank you for this uh, on behalf of everyone in our team with Career and Technical Education in Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you. Congrats again, Amy, on, and thank you so much for the important work that you're doing. <clears throat> the key to our success at MCCI is our partnerships. Two of our more prominent ones are with ACE Mentor Baltimore and the Maryland State Department of Education. We are entering into our fifth year of supporting the ACE Baltimore program. Since we have been acting as ACE's affiliate director, the number of participating schools, students, and mentors has increased exponentially. But it's not just the quantity, but the quality of the program that has increased. Even during a pandemic, we're able to take the level of the program up a notch having a program-wide curriculum for the first time ever for our tiny home project, allowing for structure and resources for the mentors so that we leveled the playing field a little between the schools. We also are excited that through working with ACE, we were able to get high schoolers internships in the built environment this summer. While MCCI has been working with, the M with MSDE since our inception, we are now into our fourth year of being the official Construction and Development Cluster Affiliate. Each year, we facilitate the professional development training sessions for all of the trades and maintenance, as well as construction design management teachers statewide. And this year, we are really excited to be helping MSDE hire a curriculum writer for the construction design management program so that the, for the first time ever, there will be a statewide curriculum for CDM. And the goal will be that CDM students graduate with college credit under their belt as well. As we mentioned earlier, our partnerships with industry, education, and government are crucial to our mission. Through the process of accepting the Pathway Awards nominations, though, we have learned about even more initiatives that we can be a part of. We hope you will join with us in pipelining the future. 
Our next award is for the Champion of Workforce Development. This award recognizes an organization for an initiative, program, or other support they have implemented, implemented that aligns with our mission. <clears throat> our first finalist is Baltimore Gas and Electric. BGE's workforce development strategy aligns with MCCI's mission to develop, promote, and connect career opportunities in the built environment through programming that targeted youth and adult job seekers from underserved communities in need of economic opportunity within the Baltimore region for career pathways in the skilled trades. Two core programs are the BGE High School Internship Program and the BGE Workforce Collaborative. The BGE High School Internship Program provides a hands-on experience to students pursuing a technical trade through a summer internship experience. This program is offered in partnership with regional CTE high schools and extends the classroom experience by providing an opportunity to gain exposure to careers in the trades. <clears throat> the internship program has impacted over 170 students since 2016 and will add an additional 70 this summer. The BG Workforce Collaborative, offered in partnership with a local nonprofit, is an intensive program training, intensive job training program that targets adults who are un underemployed or unemployed who are interested in pursuing a career within the utility industry. Participants receive job training, case management services, and are connected to a network of potential employers during their eight-week program. Since, since September 2019, this program has graduated 68 people with 86% receiving job opportunities within the industry. Over 80% of graduates were unemployed prior to graduating the program. Stanley Black & Decker's Corporate Social Responsibility Strategy aims to inspire makers and innovators to create a more sustainable world in alignment with their purpose for those who make the world. Since Stanley Black & Decker launched their strategy in 2017, they have impacted nearly 2 million makers with their programs and aim to empower 10 million by 2030. They are committed to helping employees and people of the world gain the skills and expertise needed to secure jobs and revitalize communities. Stanley Black & Decker empowers students and makers, especially women and people of color, to pursue careers in STEAM education and the trades. The company is connected with the community in Maryland, engaging in career exploration with students, sponsoring trade schools and makerspaces, and challenging the status quo of a typical career. The company partners with nonprofits like Greenlight for Girls to encourage young women to engage with STEAM education at an early age, as well as nonprofits like Black Women Build. Another partnership they have is with the Discovery Education on the Innovation Generation Program. This brings the maker movement to classrooms, inviting students and educators to explore numerous dis disciplines through building, making, and doing. The company, company's yearly Maker Month campaign also showcases diverse tradespeople around the world to highlight the uni unique women and men who make up the trade industry. In the late 1960s, Turner Construction Company made a commitment to focus on the communities that were historically underrepresented and address the areas where they would make the greatest impact. One of these areas of focus is youth workforce development, where Turner's mission is to align, unite, and leverage resources to create opportunities for careers in construction. In 1989, Turner created the Youth Force Program to help motivate youth to explore careers in the construction industry while encouraging students to stay in school and exhibit teamwork. Since 2017, they have introduced well over 41,000 students nationwide to all the possibilities a career in the construction industry has to offer. Locally, each piece of the puzzle is critical. Turner's Baltimore office has built two schools for Baltimore City Public Schools in the past three years. From pre-construction through turnover, they employed a student engagement plan, including toolbox talks to classes, student design workshop for their construction site fencing, and design contests for their hard hat safety orient orientation stickers. For each of those projects, Turner supported Baltimore City's Urban Alliance High School Internship Program, hosting a paid intern in the field to learn about construction with hands-on experience. In terms of high school internships, Turner 
also supports and participates with the Mayor's Office of Employment Development and Youth Services Youth Works Program. I believe they're actually gonna be hiring some ACE interns as well this summer. To encourage non-traditional and, and or marginalized members of the community, Turner recognizes the importance of wraparound services so that they partner with local support agencies to specifically assist with returning citizens. Turner also recognizes that many of their community members speak Spanish. So they're active members of the Hispanic Contractors Association, they teach a Turner School of Construction Management in Spanish, and they provide job site training as signage in both English and Spanish. And now I would like to turn this over to Jim O'Hare, who will announce the winner of the Champion of Workforce Development. Hello everyone, I hope you are enjoying the award ceremony. Uh, my name is Jim O'Hare. I think some of you will recognize me from a show called Parks and Recreation where I played a guy named Jerry Gergich, or actually Gary or Terry or Larry or even Barry, yes. They gave me five names over seven seasons. Crazy, but welcome to showbiz. Anyway, I have been given the honor of announcing the winner of the Champion of Workforce Development. So yes, I know the winner. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking around. Who is it? Who is it? Okay, you dragged it out of me. Congratulations to Baltimore Gas and Electric. Yay! Congratulations, BG&E. Congratulations. Enjoy your night. Enjoy the win. Take care. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jim. We'd like to invite Kristen Booker of BGE onto stage to accept award on their behalf. And don't forget to turn your camera on. It's a Saturday. Okay. Thank you. What an honor it is to receive this Pathway Award in recognition of BGE Smart Energy Development Programs. Congratulations to all the other finalists and award winners today. I'm truly inspired by the impact everyone is making. I also wanted to recognize the BGE Workforce Development team. This is very much a team effort here. Michael Davenport and Kitty Glick, as well as our, our leadership, um, Rodney O'Doy and Tanya Terrell. BGE looks forward to advancing the work and developing innovative ways to increase awareness and accessibility to careers within the industry. Thank you again, MCCEI, for the award and for your time today. It is truly an honor. Awesome, thank you so much, Kristen. And congrats again, BGE. Now we'd like to take a moment to invite uh, Melissa Cropper from Stanley Black & Decker on stage. As a platinum sponsor, Stanley Black & Decker has been a huge supporter of MCCI and the Pathway Awards. Okay, I think I got the video. <laughs> Hello everyone, congratulations to BG&E for winning the award. Um, thank you again for MCCEI for nominating us and for um, inviting us to participate in this event. We're so we're super excited and thank you for all the nominees and partners for your hard work in driving MCCI's mission to develop, promote and connect career opportunities in the built environment. Your contributions are so critical to empower makers and creators to drive innovation and creative solutions in today's evolving workforce. Stanley Black & Decker is so proud to partner with MCCEI as it aligns with our purpose for those who make the world, as mentioned in the previous slides. Our focus is really to empower those makers and explorers, builders and protectors, and really provide the tools and solutions to get the job done. This includes our long-term goal to inspire 10 million individuals by 2030 through upskilling, promoting vocational and skills training, fostering science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, STEAM education, and providing access to maker spaces. We're committed to helping employees and people of the world gain the skills and expertise needed to secure jobs and revitalize communities and partnerships with MCCI helps us achieve just that. We're so excited to continue this mission together and we wanna thank MCCI for their partnership and congratulations again to all the nominees today. Thank you, Melissa. And thanks again to all of our other platinum sponsors, uh, Not Mechanical and Whiting Turner. Okay, we wanted to take a moment to discuss some future MCCI initiatives. We'll drop the link in the chat to our contact form if you'd like to learn more about any of them. The MCCI guest speaker program aims to connect our industry to the classroom. Educators can request guest speakers who best serve their classroom needs. 
This may include geography, dem demographics, or career path. Industry professionals have the opportunity to influ influence the workforce next generation. Relaunching this fall, we're always looking for new schools and individuals to come on board. Launching next summer, the MCCI in internship program will be structured to not only serve the needs of the small and medium-sized firms, but also to appeal to high school and college students alike. In its inaugural year, MCCI's 2022 program will test the concept with targeted stakeholders specifically in the Baltimore region. The goal is for 20 high school students and 20 college students to participate in our first cohort. In the coming years, with the value of the model shown, we plan to have the MCCI internship program grow outside of the Baltimore area with programs happening in multiple regions around the state. If you'd like to learn more about hiring interns next summer or becoming an intern yourself, use the link in the chat to sign up. The construction industry is embarking on its industrial revolution. This requires a revolution in our training. Accordingly, Built by Baltimore and MCCI have come together to create a new model for construction workforce development for current high school students and young adults who have recently left the education system. This program focuses on providing underemployed Baltimore City youth a pre-apprenticeship instruction manufacturing training program in a real fabrication facility in Baltimore City. Built by Baltimore is partnering with community groups, secondary and post-secondary schools and other workforce development programs to create demand, interest, and enthusiasm for the program or for the potential trainees who can be recruited. Again, the link is in chat to our contact form. We hope you stay engaged with MCCI as we embark on these exciting initiatives. Our next award is for the Built Environment Hero. This award recognizes a person in the built environment industry who embodies the values of MCCI and who has championed workforce development initiatives in the built environment. Anthony Consoli and Kathleen Sherrill were nominated as a duo by the American Institute of Architects, AIA, Baltimore chapter, due to their work together for the association. In 2012, Kathleen and Anthony launched the Future Architects Resource Committee more commonly referred to now as the FAR Committee. This committee was created to promote an, an understanding among students and young adults who might be unfamiliar with the profession of architecture, as well as other career paths in the design and construction industry. FAR Committee has increased aware, awareness among K-12 teachers and school guidance counselors about the possibilities for a career in architecture, in particular to historically marginalized communities. Since its inception, FAR has been involved in over 50 different outreach events, introducing close to 2,000 young people to careers in architecture and the built environment. In 2016, Anthony spearheaded the Adopt a School program in collaboration with Baltimore Architecture Foundation. In this program, each architecture firm with support of the FAR committee develops hands-on activities and educational materials and enrich a particular school's curriculum while exposing them to careers in design and construction. Kathleen, as an educator of professional practice at Morgan State School of Architecture and Planning, influences soon-to-be graduates on the professional role of architects, as well as the importance of service to the community. As a founding member of the Baltimore NOMA chapter, she was instrumental in launching NOMA Project Pipeline in Baltimore. Project Pipeline empowers young people to affect change in their communities through design and to foster the ne next generation of design professionals, civic leaders, and change makers. Ben Morgan is a vice president of Barton Mallow and infuses developing, promoting, and connecting career opportunities in the built environment as an undertone to each task, meeting, and project that he completes. Not only is Ben an MCCI Board of Trustees member, but he also served as, uh, serves as adjunct professor in construction management at Morgan State University for 10 years. This role allows him to directly, margin directly impact marginalized students by encouraging them to pursue careers in the built environment and in ensuring that they have the best training to excel beyond graduation. As vice president overseeing all Barton Mallow operations in the state of Maryland, Ben takes great care to hire a truly diverse team for an inclusive and equitable work environment. 
This starts with his involvement in recruitment efforts to ensure his teams reflect the community in which they build. Ben leads outreach events across Baltimore, prioritizing local marginalized communities. In addition to recruiting, Ben utilizes his role at Morgan State University, the largest HBCU in Maryland, create a to create a pipeline of students and interns to hire full-time at Barton Mallow or refer to local partner firms, contributing to building a more diverse and inclusive construction industry across Maryland. Under his leadership, Barton Mallow has contributed over 150,000 in scholarships to Morgan State for students studying construction management. In his own words, Ben's greatest pleasure in his work is leading a group of people in a direction that is much greater than any one person and forges unity, diversity, and accountability. Shelley Halstead founded Black Women Build Baltimore in 2017. Black Women Build Baltimore is a home ownership and wealth building initiative that trains Black women in carpentry, electrical, and plumbing by restoring vacant and deteriorated houses in West Baltimore. Shelley believes that for Black women to build intergenerational wealth with the inherent security and prosperity that it can generate, they must also learn the skills necessary to maintain that wealth. Home ownership and the ability to maintain that asset is one way this can be achieved. Black Women Build is concentrated in West Baltimore in cohorts twice a year with a handful of women who become homeowners after the program. But Shelley's work has reached far beyond that. She was actually featured on the Kelly Clarkson show, giving her and Black Women Build visibility on a national scale. Shelley founded Black Women Build Baltimore with a strong belief in the power of knowledge, skills, and opportunity to shape a woman's life. She is passionate about creating opportunities for Black women to thrive. Using an intersectional framework, Black Women Build Baltimore offers its holistic training program to capable women who are ready for change and who would otherwise not have the opportunity. And now I would like to turn this over to Mike Holmes, who will announce the winner of the Built Environment Hero. Hi everyone, Mike Holmes here. I understand you are celebrating working construction. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about making it right. I love my job. I hope everyone there loves theirs. <sighs> you may be watching my show, Homes on Homes, Homes Inspection, Homes Makes It Right, Homes in New Orleans, The Homes Family Rescue. Holy crap, it's a lot of homes. What a strange last name I have. Who would have thought that uh, it would become worldwide known? I would love to announce the Built Environment Hero Award. And are you ready? Because right now, I've got the name and I've got the winner. The winner is Shelly Halstead. Congratulations. Keep doing it right. Thank you, Mike. Unfortunately, Shelly is traveling out of the country. I think she's actually taking a break from building all, the, all of West Baltimore back up. So she couldn't be with, her, couldn't be with us here today. Um, but we'd like to share her words with you in this video that she prepared. Hi, uh, my name is Shelley Halstead and I'm the executive director of Black Women Bill Baltimore. And um, I, I wanna thank MCCEI for um, putting this together uh, to honor all of us who are really passionate about the built environment. I wanna thank Stanley Black and Decker for nominating me for this award. Um, I am the executive director of Black Women Bill Baltimore and we are a home ownership and wealth building initiative that trains black women in carpentry, electrical and plumbing. And we do that by restoring vacant and deteriorated houses in West Baltimore. Um, I just, the trades have, have given me so much um, and I'm, I'm still learning so many things. And I just, I'm really excited to share my knowledge and my passion for basically getting things done with other black women. So again, thank you so much. Um, I don't know. I hope that we all just like build the heck out of Baltimore. All right. Congrats again, Shelly. And if anybody here wants to help Shelly or any of the other uh, partner organizations that we've mentioned today, 
please uh, reach out to me in the direct message and we'll get you their contact information if you can't find it. Okay, so that was the last award we're giving. Now on to our scholarships. 2021 marked the inaugural year for the MCCI Scholarship Fund. Our mission is to develop and promote careers in the built environment. What better way to do that than to help fund the education and training of our future workforce? When we proposed this idea to our board at the end of last year, they immediately took action to make the scholarships happen. I want to thank all of the people who generously donated to the MCCI Scholarship Fund, for without them, these scholarships would not happen. Numerous individuals personally donated to the fund with a list of our amazing supporters on the screen right now. We want to give a special thanks to Barton Mallow Builders who funded two of the four scholarships for us today. Today kicks off our fundraising for next year's scholarships. You'll see a link pinned at the top of the chat where you can make a 100% tax deductible contribution to our scholarship fund right now. Thank you so much to all of those who have already donated today. We'll have other ways to give back soon, including a raffle of a Yeti cooler full of goodies donated by Sunbelt Rentals. Be on the lookout for information on how to buy your raffle ticket shortly. Now we received over two dozen applications for just four scholarships. The pool of candidates was diverse in so many ways, from high schoolers through master's students, through apprenticeships who made midlife career changes, engineering majors, architectural students, construction managers, and skilled trades trainees. The judging committee had a difficult task ahead of them to narrow the pool down to just four winners. And we hope that next year we'll be able to award even more. Our first winner just completed her senior year at Northern High School in Owings Mills, where she was editor of the yearbook, served on the student council, ran track and field, played soccer, and was a member of the National Honor Society, all while maintaining a GPA of 4.51. Her father and older brothers all have careers in the built environment, but it wasn't until her time on the yearbook committee that she realized she wanted to pursue a, a career in engineering. Inspiration sometimes lies in the most unlikely places. And our winner is Katherine Lawless. Katherine plans to study mechanical engineering at the University of Maryland College Park. Katherine, please join us on stage now to accept your scholarship. Hello, <laughs> can you hear me? Okay, um, I'm Katherine Lawless. I'm attending University of Maryland next year and I'm gonna be studying mechanical engineering. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration to do engineering from my dad and my brother. So I'm really excited to do that next year and the scholarship will aid me and, and my family to help pay for college and help further my career in engineering, and I'm just really excited to do that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. We're excited to help you on your journey. Congrats again. Okay, our next winner is proof that the pathway to a career in the built environment is not always a straight line. In her own world, words, I had originally planned to teach science and further my post-secondary education and pursuit of a PhD in marine biology. Although I enjoyed teaching and my ability to constantly have my favorite subject on my brain, my path took a turn I was not expecting and now I have new goals. I will always be a teacher and a science nerd at heart, but I am very excited for my new journey as an electrical apprentice and I plan to become a master when the time permits. Learning is one of my favorite activities and this field allows me to learn and apply my new knowledge every day. After leaving teaching, our winner was working as a pool technician. It was then that she realized her love for working with her hands. Her love for science and complex systems made the electrical industry a perfect fit. And she says that since choosing her new pathway, she has finally begun to understand who she is and feel like an individual. How inspiring is that? Our winner is Christina Hum. Christina is currently an electrical apprentice working with TEI Electrical Solutions and is part of the ABC Baltimore Apprenticeship Program. Christina couldn't get off work to join us today, but instead prepared this video to accept her scholarship.
Hello. Thank you to everyone at MCCEI who um, have awarded me with this scholarship. Um, the money will be invaluable to help me with clothes and tools for my new profession. Um, I used to be a middle school science teacher, for those of you who don't know, and because I had no background in construction, I did not have any of the tools or clothes that I needed in order to make such a big change in my career. And um, it was a really scary jump and it was a big risk, but it's really good to know that there'll be um, support for me anywhere that I go. So I really appreciate this money. It's a huge help to me. Congrats again. All right, the built environment has a responsibility to sustainably build and positively impact the world around us. No one seems to know that better than our next winner. Having just graduated last week from Wild Lake High School in Columbia, this student has been, an, has been acting as a change agent already as both as a Girl Scout as an intern at the Community Ecology Institute. This past year, our winner designed, modeled, and handcrafted a sustainable birdhouse that is now the centerpiece of the makerspace of which she is the lead. For, for her, this is just the beginning of a life focus on making a positive impact on the world around her. Our winner is Priscilla Grace Knapp. Grace will hone the skills necessary to make the world a better place as a mechanical engineering student at the University of Maryland College Park. Grace, please join us on stage to accept your scholarship. Oh no, uh, oh, I'm getting a notification that um, Grace is on her phone, which won't allow her to be on video. I'm so sorry, Grace, um, but we, will, we look forward to the uh, impact that you're gonna make on the built environment in the future. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, our final scholarship winner tells us that while he was always interested in a career in the built environment, it wasn't until he was in high school and participated in the ACE mentor program that he realized he wanted to be a construction manager. His job shadowing the summer after his junior year at a local construction management firm solidified that decision for him. Realizing how important those experiences were for, her, for, were for him, he has given back as an ACE mentor for the past three years while in school full time and interning at Southway Builders. He looks forward to continuing to reinvest in the future generations of builders and designers by mentoring through ACE. And our winner is Everett Jackson. Everett, also a finalist for the Future Builder Award, is currently pursuing his master's degree in construction management at Morgan State. Everett, please join us on stage now to accept your scholarship. There we go. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very grateful for this scholarship. Um, now with my undergrad construction management degree under my belt, I'll be looking towards my next big challenges ahead. As, as the fall comes, I'll be going back to Morgan State University and working with Southway Builders as I uh, seek my master's degree in construction management. Full-time work by day, full-time classes by night would be a, har a harrowing task to manage, but I know I've made it this far with a little bit of faith and plenty of hard work and long nights. I think it's a challenge that's surmountable. Thank you all again and God bless. If anybody can do that, you can, Everett. Congrats. All right, this marks the end of our award ceremony. Before we sign off, we're going to hear from the chairman of the board of the MCCI board, Martin Knott of AIR LLC.
There we go. Can you hear me now? I'm trying to we get hear my you, but we can't see you camera. Yet. I know. <laughs> Working on oh, there we go. Bingo. All right, Jennifer. How are you? Great. Great, Great job by you and Matt and Kim. Uh, unbelievable presentation. Lots of people here uh, today. Um, you know, celebrating all of these awards, celebrating, you know, these new, these people that are built, uh, that are uh, in the middle of the built environment. Uh, from the Stanley da Black & Decker to the JATC24 to the Jumpstart program with ABC, uh, Morgan State, you know, this is Baltimore's built environment. Whiting Turner's a silver pro sponsor or platinum sponsor, not mechanical platinum sponsor. Thank you to all the platinum sponsors uh, and all the sponsors for all everything that we're doing. Uh, one of the things that you know came over to me today for sure was the importance of this work. We had the uh, secretary for the Department of uh, General Services on this call. Uh, we had an award winner. Uh, former colleague uh, on the Governor's Workforce uh, Development Board. I have to sort of remember that now. It was the GWID when I was there. Uh, and I'd also like to just uh, thank someone who I'm not sure is here today, but uh, certainly needs to be thanked, and that's Gino Gemignani. He was my partner in developing this concept uh, early on. Mike Henderson also at ABC was instrumental in sort of putting this together and a lot of other people Ron DeJulius, uh, others. And uh, so we're, you know, certainly proud of the work that we're doing. You and the staff are taking it to a whole nother level. Uh, this is to, you know, uh, love the platform here today. I think it works really well. And you guys did a fantastic job of keeping everybody entertained during two hours. And that is a long thing and that is a feat. And, you know, I came on a few minutes late, uh, but got to see everything and uh, couldn't be more pleased. I think this is a great event. And, you know, look, I can't wait for us to all have drinks in our hands and be able to, you know, snack on food and be together. But in the meantime, uh, you've done a wonderful job of, you know, sort of making us all feel like we're in the same place. And so, uh, you know, I was inspired by Shelley Halstead, um, you know, uh, I think that's amazing. I love Everett Jackson's story, the scholarship winners, all of their different stories are stories of people who became interested in the built environment uh, through some type of education me mechanism. Maybe it was a career in technology education school that they went to. And then they got a chance at an internship, it looks like, uh, in the built environment. And now that interest has gone from interest to internship and then now hopefully into industry. You see people going back for not, not just you got Everett up there at Morgan State taking advantage of that system up there and that uh, program that they have up there was very unique for Baltimore. And so, you know, I know that uh, our board is working uh, very closely with them and has been for a long time and they've got a heck of a program up there. And so really psyched to see that connection here today. Um, I, I would uh, I would end it with just, uh, you know, thanking you and all the, uh, and Matt and Kim, but also I want to thank the board uh, for all the work that they're doing uh, behind the scenes. Um, you know, I could go down the list of everybody. I think most board members are on here, which is great. And so awesome participation. And so, you know, this is, a multifunctional uh, organization. You know, we're doing guest speakers, we're doing MCCI internships, we're doing Built by Baltimore. We've got a lot going on. Our work with, um, you know, career paths and whatnot. Uh, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for, you know, organizing this great day. Thank you to all of those who sponsored. Thank you to all of the winners and congratulations to all the winners. I love all the sort of former actors doing the, uh, you know, uh, stuff. And of course, Eddie Murray, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong there. That's awesome. Number 33. And so, um, yeah, uh, what a great day. 
and uh, thank you to the board. Thank you to you. Thank you to everybody who was here today. Ellington, uh, our DGS secretary, thank him and Mike also GWIB. You know, this is a great group of people coming around an important topic. We're all, you know, in our industry, the HVAC industry, uh, plumbing industry, you know, it's really hard to find people. It just got even worse by all the money that's coming in through the federal government. Uh, you know, we are now in like crisis mode. Never before have apprenticeship programs been important in our world. You know, I'm waiting for, you know, and I think we're going to get to the point where we get our universities, where there are, you know, large, large organizations cranking out lots of plumbers and HVAC technicians and electricians and, you know, civil engineers and whatever it may be. Uh, in the professions, building automation control specialists, you know, elevators, machinery, all that fun stuff. I'm looking forward to the day that this leads to our university. And so um, I think we're well on our way. And so thanks for everybody. Awesome. Thank you very much, Martin. Sure. And I agree. I can't wait till this event is in person next year. And had we known we were originally planning that things would have been opened up a little bit by now, we probably would have been able to be in person. But this is the next best thing. That's right. Great job. Great. Thank you. And then thank you to everyone who joined us today and for the amazing work being done by industry folks, companies, community partners, government agencies, teachers and students. I hope you were as inspired as I was today. And maybe you were inspired to step up your own efforts just a little bit more. We hope to see you at our next free event, June 21st, a webinar featuring Barton Mello's VP of Communications and Branding, Dana galvin Lycor, as she talks about the importance of reimagining your corporate culture in order to recruit and retain the best talent for your firm. And this is the second in our six-part webinar series. If you have time, please stick around to congratulate our winners and to network with attendees in the social lounge. If you have any questions on how to use the social lounge, feel free to message myself, Kimberly, uh, Har, or Matt Pine. But all you really have to do is take a seat at one of the tables and you can talk uh, freely with anybody at that table. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to connect with us on whatever social media platforms you're on. Have a great day. Bye, guys. <laughs>